Hello, uh, friends of the internet. I am Austin from Austin B Media here with uh, Lynn Tran. Uh, yeah, Lynn um, from the um, Slam Dance. I think you had your premiere at Slam Dance. Um, we actually had our premiere at Heartland, a national film festival in October. Okay. So this is our second uh, festival. Okay. Yeah, but uh, and it's it's this interesting kind of movie. Uh, it's kind of a hangout movie where you follow these group of 20 somethings uh, as they get to this getaway house for um, just get, well, kind of just to get away and have some honest conversations. Um, a, a lot of it's just uh, locked off, but yeah, uh, I think you have no more slam dance screenings, but you can watch it virtually um, at on via slam dance channel. It's only eight bucks. Um, so I don't think it gets any uh, cheaper than that other than free. Um, but thanks so much for joining me. Um, I'm so glad that you had time to come on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, no problem. Um, so yeah, let's. Um, so first, it, it's got a unique title, uh, Waiting for the Light to Change. Um, did you... How, how, it sounds like a silly question, but how did you come up with the title? Um, so we actually went through a couple title changes because I'm not like the best person with titles. Um, and the the goal with this very like we were trying to find a title that reflects the 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 pace and the tone of the film and the also like sort of like the situation of like all these characters are in uh first of all it's like a, an off-season beach type movie so like when you think of the beach you think of you know summer and like you know having fun but this is uh our film set is set in um late spring a uh, late winter early spring and there's that like you know sensation of you know just you just wait for this sad season to be over and all these characters as well they're they're in their 20s and they're trying to almost like they're waiting for their life to start so we were trying to find a title um that that kind of like that has that vibe um and actually the title was come was come up by the um, by our composer and we were actually going through like a lot of like you know books and poetry I forgot where this is from but I think it at the time when we were looking for it I I was thinking wow this is like the perfect title for the film yeah and I kind of came up with uh, um my thing where it's like they're in their 20s kind of there have a lot of conversation about um, feeling behind uh, that um, they're kind of stuck in this waiting period where um, a look at my friends, look at how successful they are and doing all these other things. Why can't I have that? Um, so that was my interpretation of it. Um, and actually there, it's interesting because I was looking up the um, title and I was like, no, I don't think it's based on the book called Waiting for the Light to Change. So um, apparently there is a book called Waiting for the Light to Change. Um, but um, so um, about that conversation, about that waiting period, um, did that come from your own life or did you where did you pull that from? Uh, yes, when we were writing this, we, me and my co-writers were looking at, you know, things that we know and things that we have experienced. And we were all like in our early and mid twenties and, um, and we've been like craving for a, like a kind of movie that, that not only tells a story about that, uh, you know, period of your life, but also feels like it, like, um, like, as you said, like comparing you with your peer yourself with your peers and and feeling like oh we want to get to that place and then it would be better but then at the same time everybody sort of is trying to figure it out and always figuring it out and and there isn't like that clarity ever um 
So we had a lot of the dialogue and a lot of, you know, like character relationships came from uh, my life and also from the the performers. Like we did a lot of interviewing as we were writing. So we were writing and casting the film at the same time. And uh, well, one thing that we did was we interviewed um, our performers and um, to the extent that they are comfortable with, we try to incorporate their philosophy or their point of view in life or their relationships into the script. So yes, it's very, very personal for like a big part of the crew and cast. So did, um, I believe Jay, you know, you talk about writing for the person. Did uh, Jay actually blow out his left ear eardrum? Oh, that's, I believe that's, that's Alex actually. Um, um, I actually, I'm not quite sure about this part because um, I wasn't at that interview with, uh, with the, with the performer. Uh, but I, I feel like, yeah, so yeah, I, I, I'm not sure it no worries. might have been fictional, but we did interview him, uh, but my two other writers did the interview and, and that was, so, you know, like how we divided the script, like you write this part, I write that part and that, um, I didn't write that. So it is still a mystery to me. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, um, speaking about the writing, it's kind of written almost like you're hanging out with your friends, um, because a lot of the scenes um, are just these locked off shots where maybe I, I don't, uh, I can't speak to cinematography terms, but um, where it the camera's just still on them and watching them have a conversation, you know, uh, um, and. I guess how difficult was that to create dialogue for you know twenty somethings that felt natural and not like how do you do fellow kids? Um, so what we did, so we didn't really have a lot of time to revise the script at all. So a lot of the dialogue uh, was improv. However, we didn't like really, really improv on do the improv on set. I was very lucky to get like a week of uh, rehearsal time. Uh, so a lot of that dialogue was created in rehearsals and, you know, in rehearsals, um, I always told my my performers, uh, this is a safe space and we're going to try things out and like, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And, you know, it's just a learning process. Um, so what we did is we would improv and I would have my phone with me. I would record some of the dialogue there and then I would go back and listen to it, trim it, rewrite and then send them back, uh, send the script back to um, the actors. So it was not as, you know, it, it wouldn't be as challenging as doing it like on set. So we actually had a little bit of control, but at the same time, we had that opportunity um, to have the actors, you know, like like inject their voices and, you know, their, their, their live experience into the characters and like speaking out from their own experience. So that was very interesting. And uh, I feel very lucky to get that rehearsal time to be able to craft that dialogue with them. Yeah, that's interesting because you say rehearsal time and I'm like, are you sure you didn't just turn the camera on and start shooting? Because some of these conversations are real conversations I've had with my friends. I mean, maybe not so much about boys, but like uh, conversations about what are we going to do for when we get 30? What, why, what are we do doing in this holding pattern? Um, you know, it's, it's really intriguing and almost in it, it feels, I, I, I've probably said this before, but it almost feels like a documentary in that sense, where it's just th this naturalistic kind of dialogue, um, which is really interesting. Um, and then, um, I don't know if how much you um, want to talk about cinematography, but can you talk a little bit about just the um, going back to the setting the camera down or the locked off shots? Mm -hmm. um, so having a not a lot of setups has always been like a decision very early on. And uh, what I wanted and then what I always want to do as a filmmaker is 
to let the audience like like to challenge the audience a little bit you know like in you know in 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 commercial um films you see we we are so used to like a lot of like cutting uh but you know that doesn't allow the audience to feel like time as much as if you are like static and you just play out the scene in real time. So that was what I wanted to do to begin with. So a, a lot of the audience who um, have seen the film have told me that they feel like they were in the room with the characters. And I feel like to have that effect, um, uh, the, the static camera or like the one long take that was what it took to to have that effect or like the yeah to have that effect on the audience um and towards the end of the film there's a little bit of a break of that rule since you know like there's it's it's also like to me like a frame that holds the characters together is all, all also like a way to kind of convey that these characters they are trying like very hard to you know, enjoy this trip, even though they don't have anything to do, even though they're like tension bubbling like underneath the surface. Um, but once that kind of like is broken and like you see that kind of like come onto the surface, like we start to, you know, do shot reverse shot, we start to have like more close ups. So that's a language that we, me and my DP really developed very early on. I was very lucky to, um, you know, to have been working with a DP, like, and we got to know each other for a long time, for a while before we started shooting the project. So um, that was where it came from. Yeah, because it was kind of interesting because I was watching this uh, Dolly Parton impersonation movie where I actually had to turn it off because of its shot, of its overuse of shot, reverse shot. Um, I, I can't say much without spoiling the review embargo, but I I had to turn it off like 30 minutes in because I was like, I can't deal with this. This is too much. Uh, it, it gives you this kind of sense of whiplash. So it's refreshing to come here and, you know, let's just marinate in what the characters are say, saying to each other. And, you know, um, for example, there's this conversation where um, one of the characters... Uh, her phone is vibrating and one of the characters says, hey, why don't you go get that? And she's just like, you know, I'm, I, I think she says the equivalent of, you know, I, I can get it later. Uh, I'm here talking to you or something of that nature. Um, which was really nice because it's almost reaffirming to the viewer. Stay in this moment right now. Don't, you know, I, I know with the virtual uh, stuff, it's, uh, it's a um, tendency to where like, oh, hey, let's look at our phones real quick. Um, but it, it was almost like that person was reminding me, reminding the viewer, hey, pay attention. It, it's time to really get into the heart of what this film is about uh, beyond what was said in the um, in a few scenes earlier. Um but yeah, um, let's see. Um, yeah, it, it's just a great film that I hope people see. Um, do you have any screenings coming up after Slam Dance? Um, so we are uh, we are going to another festival. So we have been like submitting to other festivals, and we've been like waiting and uh, hope to hear soon. So recently, actually, you know what? it's a secret right now that one is a secret right now so there will be screenings but um we we cannot disclose that yet and uh, okay. hopefully there will be more screenings very very soon but in the meantime it's on the slamish channel until the 29th yeah and um i'll i'll give you the same advice i gave um oh my previous interview um which i believe was for um oh gosh sweetheart deal mm -hmm. um and I would really love to see um, a bunch of these movies hit um, the film independent um, scre uh, screening platform after Spirit Awards, because I think um, some of these movies from Slamdance could really get some um, attention to these movies, maybe even get um, some distributors locked onto it. 
Thank you so much. Yeah, we will look into it. Yeah, no problem. Um, but um, Lynn, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I hope you have a great rest of the slam dance, uh, of the slam dance, of slam dance. Uh, and yeah, I just hope people see this, the film whenever um, it comes out, whenever the next screening is. Uh, and I'll make sure to include all the links to see the film in the YouTube description. Thank you so much. Thanks.